Hello, everybody. It's the coach. This is Madden 20 on EA Sports. On tap, we've got what should be a fairly intriguing matchup between the Jacksonville Jaguars and the Tennessee Titans. With that, let's get you up to Nashville and Nissan Stadium. For the call, we welcome in our broadcast team, Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. By many accounts, Coach, one of the most underrated home venues in all of the NFL resides in the heart of Nashville, Tennessee, and that's where we find ourselves at Nissan Stadium. The scene a few moments ago, here it is. It's unlike any other in sport as both teams made their way out of the tunnel. These folks are fired up as their guys are ready to do battle between the Jacksonville Jaguars and the Tennessee Titans. With Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon. Charles, we take a look at this Titan ball club entering play. They come in off the extended break from the bye. I think it was much needed as well. You play two, two and a half months, you're ready for some time off to get set for the home stretch. Meanwhile, for the visiting Jaguars, they come in after a win last week, and it had been some time since we said that. That broke a nine-game skid. So I'm not sure if that was happiness or relief in their locker room after the last game. Let's see if they can put a second win together. is upon us. It's week 12 of the NFL season, and we're underway on EA Sports. And this will be a touchback as Ed sails over the inline. So the Titans set to go to work for the first time. They are led out by the final quarterback selected in the 2019 draft, the former Nittany Lion. It's Trace McSorley. You talk about the pause that refreshes. I think it's come at a perfect time of the year for them, hasn't it? You know, they, the season is starting to wind down, got a little bit of a break. But how about the guy calling the signals? He's got to be excited about that because now he didn't just get a game plan for one week. He's able to work on it for two weeks. I can't wait to see if they have anything special in, in store for him today. It's a loss of four on that first play, and it's second down. So the first play of the drive lost four. Now they'll look to move it forward here on second and 14. He's going to go deep for Funches. Pass incomplete, but the flag in the backfield, and this might be a roughing Pushing call. Ball, roughing the passer defense. So a pretty early first quarter roughing the passer penalty. Seems like the officials are going to let everyone know they're taking charge of this game. They're always going to protect the quarterback. Jones. Two yards on the carry there. It'll be second down. And we roll now on the offensive starters and Chance Warmack. Absolutely massive man, but he has agility. He can move as well, but his forte is power. If you try to bull rush him, it's going to be a long day for the defender. Here's the second year back from Southern Miss, Edo Smith. And he stopped immediately there. Officially no gain on the play, and they're left with a third and eight. Well, look now at our starting defense. They come into this one way down at number 23 against the run of the NFL. And when people talk about facing a challenge, they are certainly getting one in this ball game because they're facing the number one rushing unit in the NFL, which means this is going to be a contest they've got to be prepared for from the first snap. Now McSorley setting up the screen here, Aaron Jones. And able to get this one across the 45 before he's brought down. That's a first down pickup for Tennessee on a gain of 10. I like the screen being called here early in the game, especially on the opening drive, because, Brandon, when guys come out of the locker room, especially those pass rushers, they are so amped up to get to the quarterback that you can use that against them, and a screen pass is a great way of doing it. A lot of teams against good pass rushing teams, they want to run the screen 10 to 12 times in the game. Give him a couple on the carry there. Second and eight. Staying on the ground. This time it's Smith. Two runs in a row, but only two yards to show for it. From the midfield stripe, they'll look to throw. He'll buy some time right. He may try and run for this. 
And he'll go down, but not before getting this inside the 30. Here we go. Here we go. And he's going to have another first down as the tackle's made at the Jaguars' 26. First down at the 26-yard line. Now a first down carry by Jones. And just no chance of turning the corner. He can only get back to the line of scrimmage. Second and 10 coming up. Second on the play. Second and 10. Ready. Looking to throw on second down. McSorley. This complete to Jones. Ready break. Play number nine now on this pretty long opening drive. But this is third down. On third down, it's McSorley. He can run for it, and he will. He'll wind up getting four yards there on his own, but it also brings up fourth down. He was able to get away earlier in the drive, but apparently all the time they put in practice finally came to the front, didn't it? They remembered their lessons and found a way to contain him when he took off on that one. Able to move the ball on that drive. Yes, just three points, but four first downs were in there. Yeah, and you can look at it and feel pretty good about the whole thing and think, okay, this should continue throughout this ball game. On the flip side, if you're a defender, it's almost like whew, we only gave up three. They moved the ball on us pretty well. So Doug Marone's Jaguars set to take over. And leading them, Charles, their quarterback, their field general. And this could be a whole lot of fun because if his game plan goes into effect early, we're going to see some shots downfield, aren't we? What did he talk to us about? Stretching the field. Wants to open things up for not just his receivers, but for anything underneath. Well, that was the theme, the front page of the sports section, where the columnists write, possible air raid. So we'll see. Yeah, it's going to be interesting to see how the coaches view that, right? What? Who gave what the game plan? I think it's pretty obvious, though. That'll help them win. So after the run for no gain, here's second and ten. You better be afraid of me. Second and ten. And his throw is going to be incomplete. Time for a look at our starters here on defense. And they find themselves just outside the top 10 in the league against the pass, currently bringing up the number 11 spot. And since this is such a good unit of covering passes downfield, I think that last play is typical of what we might see. A lot of short passes, see if they can generate some run after the catch, but nothing doing on that one. An incomplete pass on second down. That muddles things a little bit here. This is third and 10. They'll look to throw. On the screen, this is Edmonds. And they'll get him down at the 34, and he's going to be short of the first by a few yards. Eight yards on the screen there, not enough. And it'll be fourth down. Instead of throwing it downfield, Charles, they just tried to dump it underneath there. Do you like the call? I do. I think it's a high percentage play because you get the completion, and what you're counting on is you're back to use his legs and his elusiveness to make people miss and pick up the first down. In this case, it didn't happen. And this one hits at the one, continues on into the end zone for a touchback. And the Titans getting set to go. And still a lot of football to be played in this season. We're only in November. A lot can happen between now and January. But if it ended today, they would just be on the outside of the playoff picture looking in. So a lot to fight for. Yeah, and wasn't it interesting in our meeting with, with the coaching staff that they all made sure to let us know, we know where we are right now, but the playoffs don't start tomorrow. We still got some time, and they plan on putting it together formulating a streak, get the whole month of December still left to play, they think they can get in. And they made it very obvious to us that there's no playoff talk in the locker room right now. It's win this game and look to next week. Excellent focus. Double this guy has to be a priority before moving up to the next level because the big fella, he just ate that one alive, just stuffed it. In fact, before the game, he was talking to us and he's like, hey, these pants make me look fat, and we said, nah, man, you're just a whole lot of guy. He is at well over 300 pounds. He's a big man. Four yards on the pick up there as they get it back to a more manageable third and seven. Makes it third and seven. Ready, ready? Out of the shotgun, McSorley. He's going to wind up and air it out, and that'll be incomplete. Now they took their shot all right, but it comes up empty, and it's fourth down. Matt Had an open man that time, but ended up putting a little too much heat on it, don't you think, partner? Absolutely, just needed a touch more air under it. Instead, he fired an absolute bullet. Fielded at about the 28. 
comes the Jacksonville offense as they get set to take over here. And on the first drive, three and out. And I know that these are professional athletes, but I would imagine sometimes you, you get the nerves at the beginning of a game still, don't you? Those don't ever go away. And typically what I've heard from guys and what I remember from playing, if you don't have nerves at the start of a game, it's not gonna be a great day for you. You're not really ready to play. So finding a way to harness those nerves and not let them affect you in a negative way, that's what all the guys are looking for. That's going to set them back five yards. The they were set. looking good on second down, but now they're backed up five yards by the false start, second and it's three. second and eight. <laughs> on second down, it's Snell. And this winds up a pickup of two, maybe two and a half to about the 39. On third down, he'll drop to throw. Over the middle, complete. That's Hudson. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. They gave up the completion there, but this is what zone defenses count on. Catching the ball and not much run after the catch. On the double. 50, Mike's 50. Here we go, here we go. Tight right, tight right. Careful, careful. A fourth round pick in 2018. Chase Edmonds with a carry. DJ Reader there on the tackle. Here's second and eight. Nowhere to escape, and he goes down. Kyle Van Noy. He's the one that got home and takes him down for a loss of nine. Now on third and long, they'll look to throw. It's a short one here, complete to his tight end. They get seven there, but it brings up four. That's certainly playing down in distance very well by the defense, isn't it? Take whatever you want underneath, by all means. And this one sails out of bounds. I think it'll be inside the 25. It will. 24-yard line is where they'll spot it. And here comes Tennessee as they get set to take the field. They've got a 3 0 lead and the football as they start first and 10. They'll start out on the ground with Jones. And he's upended after a gain of two out to the 27. They'll break the huddle, come up on second and eight at the 27 yard line. And they'll try the jet sweep here. And oh, he coughed it up. And the Jags grab it, and his guys are going to get the football at the 37-yard line. The psychology of the game never ceases to amaze me because you would think there would never be a fumble from what we hear from coaches all the time, right? And how much they practice not fumbling. Practice it, preach it, talk about it all the time. You would think no one would ever turn it over. Yet they are humans out there running around, and we just saw another one. Opportunistic by the defense. The Titans offense set to begin the drive. Now, last drive, obviously not what you're looking for. You've got the lead. You've got to protect the football. So, in other words, someone got lucky. <laughs> Nowhere to escape, and he goes down. Rashawn Gary credit him with a sack, and it goes as a loss of six. Work to be done here on second and 16 after the sack. Titans three, Jaguars nothing. 3-0 after one on EA Sports. Protection certainly going to need to be a bit better here on second and 16. From the shotgun, a give to Jones. And he'll get this up only to about the 33. The Titans on third down. They've hit two for four thus far. This is third and 14. Here's McSorley now, third and long. In a double coverage, and it's intercepted. He's picked off at his own 47. Yeah. 
that time defensively looked like they showed quite a bit of pressure but backed off and it proved fruitful they get the pick he went through all of his rules about getting rid of the ball quickly because he read blitz he saw all those people stacked at the line of scrimmage and then they fooled him by dropping into coverage. Now he's ready to get rid of the ball fast. But guess what? Too many defenders out there. Exactly as you described, an interception. Let's go, D Titan. Let's go, D Titan. Personal foul, roughing the passer, defense. Well, we looked at each other right away. We knew that flag was coming out. And I always enjoy the conversation post because yeah. officials always tell you, I don't want to throw the flag, but you caused the play. You did it. I had to. Now a throw to the end zone on first down, but it winds up incomplete. They'll go again from the three here on second and goal. They'll try and run it in with Janovich, the fullback. And this won't be enough to pick up the first. A gain of two, third and one. After getting stuffed on first down, not much better there. Two-yard gain. Well, they have that one sniffed out. Excellent run. And he'll take this one in for a Jags touchdown. Gus Edwards, his first touchdown on the year. And the Jaguars have taken the lead. Able to punch it in on third down makes it easier for those guys on the sideline. They didn't have a fourth down decision to make. Yeah, could you feel the exhale? Because they were already thinking ahead as all the good coaching staffs do. Anticipating what we have to make the call. They already had it lined up. Never even got to it. Will Lutz on for the point after. And this is up and good to make it 7-3. Makes the score, Jaguars 7 just a four-play drive that time. And it ends with a one-yard touchdown run. After the touchdown, Lutz to kick it off. This one fielded at the five. And he'll take this across the 25. A couple extra yards up to the 27-yard line. Tennessee offense about set and ready to go. And following the interception, just any interception, are you a little bit more cautious when you start that next drive or no? You just throw that out the window. Nowhere to escape, and he goes down. Javon Hargrave make that now eight sacks for him on the season. After the sack, it's second and 19, and the road gets a bit tougher from here. Here's McSorley to throw. And that'll be incomplete. Took a pretty good shot as he tried to pull that one in. Couldn't hang on third down. An incomplete pass on that last play, and that means they'll need to come up with something here on third down. Now throwing on third down there, but he cannot connect. Not much going on this drive. Looks like they're going to have to punt it away, CD. And right now, I know a lot of their fans are screaming for the OC to change things up, get away from what he's been calling. Sometimes you just need better execution of the plays that have been called. This is taken at the 18. Well, he wasn't too far from breaking that. Officially, give him 15. And the Jaguars go on offense, first down and 10. So they'll come up first and 10 now from the 33. It'll be Edmonds to begin the drive. And they'll get it up just short of the 45 at the 44. 11 yards there for Jacksonville and a first down as well. Pardon if you want more carries, I think we saw how you get him. Showed that he's got the fresh legs and he picked up the first down on that run. Don't just ask for him. Show him that you're supposed to get the football. On the ready. Mike, 59, Mike. Check, check, 59. I'm coming for you. You mind? Let's go. They'll go with Snell here on first down. That he is going to be stopped cold behind the line of scrimmage. A loss of two there, second down. It's a loss of two. Brings up second and On second down, Snell. And able to break one tackle, but then quickly brought down. The second down play, not much better than the first. Just a gain of one there. And it's third down. He'll drop to throw. A bullet throw, but incomplete. 
I know tight ends love this route because a lot of times they'll fake a block first and get a little bit of space and then come across the middle because in their mind, they're thinking catch the ball and then drop the hammer on the little guys in the secondary. Unable to drop the hammer, he just dropped the pass. And a great job here. This is going to turn out to be a beauty. This is marked down at about the three-yard line. That is how you flip field position. That's an absolute bomb of a punt. Downs it inside the five-yard line. Absolutely ideal. From that position, you're hoping to get it down inside the 15, inside the five. Superb. Now he'll pull it down, and they'll get him down up past the 15-yard line. Good coverage downfield led to him taking off, picking up the first down on a 13-yard run. We've seen the pressure get to him several times in this game. There, though, we see him escaping. And we've seen this rookie video before as well. That type of pressure, oftentimes, what do you resort to? Your legs try and escape. What you hope is that this doesn't become habit for him, that he learns how to handle the pressure, still keep his eyes downfield, and make some throws. Tackle made there by Bilal Nichols. Throwing on second down, McSorley. Forced out to his left. And now, he, and now a fumble. The ball's out. And the Jags grab it. And they will score. It's a Jacksonville touchdown. touchdown. Huge, huge play by the defense. Not only to force the fumble, obviously, but to return it for a touchdown. And I know it's no fun for anyone who plays offense, but isn't it fun to see how a defense rallies when there's a fumble return and everyone tries to find someone to block? and bring it all the way home. I always like their celebrations because they don't get there that often. No, they're not choreographed very well, usually. <laughs> Lutz to try to add the PAT. And this one's right through to make it a 14-3 ball game. And you can bet they're preaching two hands on the ball here as the kicks away following that fumble return. This is taken at his four. And he's up across the 25 and down at the 28-yard line. Here again comes the captain of this offense leading his crew back out there now. And he's been fun to watch run the football. We know he can pass, but using his legs effectively here in this one. No doubt about it. Watch him maneuver in the pocket, out of the pocket, making the plays that he's making, which are breaking down the defense. I thought back to when we had our morning jog before the game, and I couldn't keep up with you. Those legs, they're valuable for his team. And yeah, they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. The Titans get 14 yards there and move the chains as well. First and 10 at the 42-yard line. They keep it with Smith on first down. And he'll be brought down, losing yardage back at the 40. It's a loss of two there, bringing up second down. A loss of two brings up second and 12. On second and 12, McSorley flushed to his right. He's going to take off with it. And he'll slide down to avoid the tackle. And he's going to have another first down as the tackle's made at the Jaguars' 41-yard line. This offense finding its legs now. Here's another first and 10. Here's Jones. And he only manages a couple here down to about the 38-yard line. Go, Mike 50, Mike 50. I'm going to run you over. Call it no gain on the dump off, and it's third down. The Titans on third down. They've converted just two for six thus far. This is third and eight. McSorley sets to pass. And that will be incomplete. Intended for Devin Funches. Incomplete. That's a first down if he holds on, but you saw the contact. Able to jar it free from it and force a fourth down. Great play defensively there, as you said, just to knock it free, because if he had caught that, pass the sticks, first down. 
was a kicker from that distance, 56, 57 yards. So many things you got to worry about, but I am a little surprised he didn't get it there. Yeah, with the way kickers are nowadays, we're surprised anything under 65 that it doesn't get at least to the crossbar. But remember this, you have to drive it a little bit lower in order to make that distance, and you also have to be worried about the interior rush that they can get their hands on it. So that's why those stronger kickers nowadays are going to pop it up in the air and still travel and carry it. That's who you're looking for. Just a couple on the pickup there, and now it's third down. They'll set up a throw. And he can't quite corral it defensively. Maybe some space to go the other direction if he had caught it. That brings up fourth down now. Didn't have a receiver open downfield, as it turned out. Couldn't even find his outlet, man, because of the coverage. It's way too tight. Unable to find anyone open. And that one hits a little too close to the goal get line. Ready, and it continues into the end zone for a touchback. The Titans' offense now, they work their way back onto the field. And they've got to be a little bit frustrated about that last drive. Missed field goal. Always hurts a team because, you know, you put something out there. You've given yourself a chance. You're in range, and the ball doesn't go through the post. But it's not something to panic about, I don't believe. Just keep playing and keep going. The first play of the drive there is incomplete. After the incompletion, here's second and 10 from the 20. On the counter, here's Jones. And he's going to get seven out of this before being taken down at the 27. The Titans on third down, lacking much success. Just two for seven to this point. This time, it's third and three. So a jump there defensively. That's a killer. Watch the football. Don't move across the line of scrimmage until the ball moves. Here's McSorley on first and 10. Looking middle, and it's incomplete. He was looking for the connection with Devin Funches. That'll bring up second down. To throw once more on second and 10. McSorley. Jones has it. Give him eight on the play, and that'll make it third down. They had the catch on second down, but it didn't help at all, and now they're looking at third down here. We've got a 14-3 ball game with two minutes left in the opening half. And we remind you, coming up at the half, we'll join who, Charles? The coach. <laughs> the coach, Jonathan Coachman, standing by in Orlando. He'll have stats and scores from games in progress, as well as scores from earlier today. So, the coach. Sorry, we get slap happy up here sometimes. Now a third down throw, but it misses the target incomplete. You get a tight end like this, and you know he's used to dishing out punishment, but here... He's one that has to absorb the contact, and as a result, unable to hold on to the football. That's it, baby. We got first. Jaguars come to the line to start their next drive. They got the lead. Last time had to punt it, though. What's the key to this drive? I think it's leverage. Ah, the leverage. big guys up front. You know the motivational speech on the sideline is, guys, give us an opportunity. Protect the passer, create space for our runners, and let's go ahead and get these guys. Low man wins. Let's go do it on this drive. <laughs> we'll watch that leverage on this drive. Throwing again on second down, but this time it's incomplete. Chase Edmonds, the man he was looking for, but now it'll be third down. They'll set up to throw. Nowhere to escape, and he goes down. The Titans going to use the first of their timeouts as they'll head to the sideline and talk over what to do next. Here's Matt Hawk now as he's on for the fifth time here today. And he deserves a bronze leg as he gets this one away. Fair catch called for and taken right near the 30-yard line. So a change of possession here on the punt. And it'll be Titan football. So first and 10 now from the 30. McSorley, first and 10. Oh, nearly a disaster there on the check down. But they'll get it back. Ball on the 30 as they come up, second and 10. Second and 10, it's McSorley. Looking right sideline, but it's incomplete. Mac Hollins, the intended target, and it's third down. Now they face a third and 10 after back-to-back -back incompletions. Throwing is McSorley. He's going to go for a big play downfield. 
And it's knocked away and incomplete. DeAndre Baker, the first corner chosen in this year's draft, there to make the play defensively. Well, partner, they're not content to run this one out as we head towards the half, trying to hit a big chunk play right there and add to their score. Now, this is a confident group. At the very least, they're thinking field goal. Yeah, and I don't blame them one bit. I don't think you sit on the ball going into the half when you have a chance to put some more points on the board. Jaguars come to the line to start their next drive. You've got under a minute to go here until halftime. You've got the good size lead. No need to do anything crazy. No, there really is no need to do anything crazy. The smart play, go ahead and take your lead into the locker room and then try and add to it in the second half. But there's a part of me that looks at this and says, first half going my way, I have a little bit of a cushion. Let's go ahead and try and extend things. If you've got some good plays drawn up, you might want to think about them right here. This defense tightening up a bit. That last catch, just one yard, making it third and nine. Got his man complete over the middle. It's Hudson. The Jaguars going to go ahead and use their first timeout as they stop it here with just under 40 ticks to go in this first half. Draw play, Edmonds. And he takes this up right near the 45-yard line. Yeah, now the Jags will yeah. use the second of their timeouts as the clock will stop with 35 seconds to go in quarter number two. Second and five. Looking left side, and he's got a man. It's Hudson. Getting it to him in space pays off big time. That winds up going for 31. What a luxury to have a tight end that can not only catch it, but then can run after the catch like that. What was the old expression back in the good old days that they used to carry pianos yeah. on their backs <laughs> when they were after they caught the football? Someone would stop and bang out a tune along the way as well. <laughs> but nowadays, these guys are essentially bulked up wide receivers, and they are a full part of the passing we go, game. We and we see a lot of big plays as we just saw there. So the big play gets him all the way down to the outskirts of the red zone here for first and 10. And he's going to have the hook up to Gage. And they'll get him down after a pickup of eight, second and two. The Jaguars now will use the last of their timeouts as it'll come with 15 seconds to play in the first half. Second and two. And this is intercepted, but they'll say out of bounds. So very close to a turnover there in the end zone. After the incompletion here now, third and two. They'll drop to throw. That's going to be caught at the 10-yard line. Cheetah, cheetah. Cheetah, cheetah. So we have reached halftime here in an 11-point contest. As we send you down to Orlando, where Jonathan Coachman has our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. All right, Brandon, thanks very much. Things starting to get interesting in this final weekend before Thanksgiving. So let's see what's going on around the NFL. Let's check on one final game for you. And you can see they are scoreless as they play the second quarter. Meanwhile, in our game, it's been a back-and-forth first half. Who can put it together in the second half? For the answer, we turn it back over to our broadcast team of Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. All right, Coach, thank you, and we welcome everyone back for quarter number three. That'll be taken in the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. So here are the Jaguars to take over on offense. Last week they got the victory against the Colts, so they lead this one as well as they begin things here first and ten. They'll come out throwing here to start the drive. It's a short one here, complete to the tight end. 
And he's upended after a gain of two That's out to the 27. Give him a couple on the catch. It's second and eight. Well, the strategy was evident there. Get it to your tight end and make it a one-on-one -on -one play with a cornerback. Who's usually going to win that one? The tight end, but not there. Not in this situation. How about the corner defeating that logic and making a really nice tackle? They'll break the huddle, come up on second and eight at the 27-yard line. Looking to throw. And his throw here is incomplete. On the ready. So the failure to connect on second down, that leaves him staring up here at a third and eight. Back to throw here. And a throw right sideline is complete. And he'll be tackled right on the chalk of the 45. And the play goes for 19 yards, gives him a new set of downs. one incomplete after the incomplete pass here now is second and ten second and ten and he comes back with one complete and he's going to have another first down as the tackles made at the titans 41 yard line draw play and it's snell Five yards on the carry. Good pickup on first down. They'll look to throw here. Wide open receiver complete. And he's going to have another first down as the tackle's made at the Titans' 27-yard line. First down, Jacksonville. On first down, he'll drop to throw. And finding the tight end, Wilson. They'll wind up with three yards out of that, and it's second down. That first down completion only netted him three. Second and seven. Here's a second and seven. That's complete to Edmonds, his running back. No gain on the play, and it'll bring up a third down. They had the catch on second down, but it didn't help at all. And now they're looking at third down here. Now back to throw. And the throw there going to be incomplete. But that was certainly an aggressive call and an aggressive play. Instead of just going for the first down, took the shot in the end zone, went for the touchdown. And on third down, they said, forget about the sticks. We want six. A 41-yard attempt. Oh, they get to the football. It's blocked. It's picked up. A live ball here. The big fella. He's at the 50. He's at the 30. 20. And he's going to score. It's a Titans touchdown. As his guys are in for six. As his guys are back within a single score. Well, you know, you can't get all the points back at once, but baby steps a good start. A start that was sorely needed because this team looked like they might be out of this one, but getting a touchdown, getting back into it, gives them hope as they move forward. Now a two-point conversion attempt forthcoming. Now McSorley. Nowhere to escape, and he goes down. So tried to throw it in for two points, but the D got home, brought him down. Yeah, got home, which means there had to be good coverage. Just had nowhere to go with the ball. Typically, you're trying to throw quick hitters, quick slants, you know, maybe even a quick fade. Nothing was open. He ends up getting sacked. And out now comes Jacksonville as they get ready to go. The last time they had a little bit of a special teams breakdown, a field goal was blocked. Yeah, and everything has to be precise in the kicking game. Snap, hold, kick. Obviously, the blocking to keep people out. So what you really want to do is get in there and get six points and take the pressure off of those guys. It's a loss of a yard there, and now second down. 
sometimes with the running game, you've just got to stick with it. Look, this is the third quarter, no time to panic. But that also doesn't mean you just do it the same way you've been doing it the entire ball game. Maybe change up some blocking assignments or run a few different plays, but stay with the overall essence of the running game. A loss of a yard there to start out. That leads to a second and 11. Second and 11. And this one taken in on the right sideline, but not in the field of play. They say it's incomplete. The throw led him a little too far. It brings up third down. They're going to look to throw. And that is incomplete. Had to pass there third and long on your own side of the field. Just couldn't come up with anything. That's why teams always talk about having to win the early downs, meaning you've got to gain yardage and set yourself up for third and short because when it's third and long, the odds go down significantly trying to pick up the first down, even throwing the football. Here's Matt Hawk now as they're forced to kick for the sixth time today. His first punt, 48 yards. This one looks equally as good. Returning his peppers. Give him 11 yards that time on the return. And the offense will take over with a new set of downs. And here comes Tennessee as they get sent to take the field. So here's a first and 10 at the 38. Double tight, double tight. Four down, four down. Watch 17 coming. Now. Looking to throw on first and ten. Here's McSorley. Funches has it complete. The completion good for three and it's second down. That first down completion only netted him three. Second and seven. McSorley sets to pass. Looking left side. He's got it complete. And he'll get it out a couple yards shy of midfield at the 48. Seven yards there and a first down. They'll run on first down. It's Jones. And he is tackled inside the 40, not quite to the 35. The Titans get 14 yards there and move the chains as well. Sometimes it's hard to believe, but there are times this game is about patience, isn't it? Has had the game he expected, but that run there, that may get him going. I was just going to say, maybe that gives him a little juice, because you're right, he struggled, especially in that first half. Yeah, and I know the great ones always think to themselves, just hang in there. I'm just one big carry away from busting this open. That's a good start for him. Throwing on first down, but this one winds up to be incomplete. Line of scrimmage again the 37 as they line up second and 10. Firing quickly here and that's complete. And brought down but not before they're inside the 25. That one good for a pickup of 15 for Tennessee. I like watching the wide receiver screen because it's a real teamwork play. Because guess what? The guy catching the ball, he'll get all the credit. But how about the people up to block in front of him? Either fellow receivers or offensive linemen. That makes that play a really nice timing play, and sometimes it can break big. Set. 60 Pittsburgh. Like the it's our time. It's our time. McSorley from the shotgun. Yeah, a quick throw here. That's complete. Seven yards, the pickup on the pitch and catch. Able to get seven on that first down pass play. Second and three. Plus start offense. And that'll set them back five. They were looking good on second down, but now they're backed up five yards by the false start, and it's second and eight. Second down, here's an option right. Looking to find a lane, but he can't rein in at the line of scrimmage. Call it no gain on the keeper, and it's going to bring up a third down. On third down, it's McSorley. Dancing to his left. And he's going to lose a yard or two. Taken down behind the line. You never want to give up a sack. From the O-line's perspective, they hate it for several reasons, especially because they felt like they let little brother down back there in the pocket. Oh, no doubt. They have a ton of pride, and they go into every job wanting to keep that guy clean. They want that uniform with no grass stains, no dirt, nothing on it. But it's really, really difficult. You're talking about some terrific athletes who are trying to put him on the ground. 
Now Chandler Catanzaro for the field goal here. From the left hash, this from 39. Catanzaro's kick is good. And that will cut the lead down to just two. So a good kick there to polish off the drive with three points. Yeah, coaches always talk about finishing a drive with a kick. Two of them give you points, either an extra point or, in this case, a field goal. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. Jaguars come to the line to start their next drive. And a tight game after punting last time to see if they can get something going on this drive. As they head to the field now, with the game this close, you've got to feel there's a sense of urgency for them going on offense right now. But they have to do it without letting panic creep in and affect their play. Second and six. It's hauled in by Wilson. 6-4 tight end. And he's going to have another first down as the tackle's made at the Titans' 43. So operating from Tennessee territory now. Here's first and 10 at the 43. They'll look to throw. And that is incomplete. He couldn't hold on through the contact. Brings up second down. So second down, still 10 yards to go. Ball on the 43. They'll run with Snell. Running lanes were at a premium in the first half, but he's able to find some room there, and he's hoping that that's a precursor of a big second half. Back to throw, and it's complete. This is Austin Prohl. That'll get him the first down as they get nine yards out of that quick slant. This has to go down as one of the simpler routes in the playbook, but oh so effective. Nice completion there. Keeps the sticks moving. On the set. Watch 52. 52 is the mic. Now whistles here, and I believe one of the Jaguar linemen offense. might have moved. Justin Pugh, the left guard that this. time with a flag. A full Mike, start Mike, backs Mike, him up Mike, five. Mike, first and 15. <laughs> now a shotgun snap as they'll look to throw. Oh, incomplete. A turnover would have really helped there. Almost intercepted. Instead, it's just second down. Second and 15. And that is incomplete. He was looking for his tight end, Mike Kosicki, and it's third down. Seventh play of this drive coming up, but a long way to go on third down. They'll set up to throw. And he's going to find his man out of the backfield. That's complete. And he is out of bounds inside the 30. A gain of eight there on the eighth play of the drive. And at his size, he's a smaller back. You can get him to football. He can kind of get lost, make someone miss. It's good for him. Yeah, it's great for him. I like what you said there. Sometimes he gets lost in the traffic a little bit. But get him out in the open field into some space. That plays to his strengths the best and keeps him out of it where all the big boys are. You know, make him make someone miss in the open field. And a nice return sets him up pretty good here at the 30-yard line. Here's Aaron Jones in the offense trotting back out. And after a sluggish start, he's really bounced back. The numbers bear that out. And you're a baseball guy, partner. How many at-bats over the course of a baseball season? Oh, boy. Four about in three, a game. Yeah, about the four in a game. Four times 162. Three or so, right? Sometimes it takes a while for a guy to get going. That's my point. It's not the first few carries. You don't worry about that. As they go along, get that guy lathered up, get those blocking assignments down. Those two-yard gains turn into bigger gains as the game moves along. An 11-yard pickup for the Titans and a first down. This quarterback now, six for six since coming back out of the locker room. It's first and 10. No room to be had there on the first down run as he's lucky to get back to the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play there, second down. Brings up second and 10 at the 41-yard line. And that is going to do it for this third quarter of action. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. Let's go. Ten Lobo. Blue there. Blue there. Let's go. Looking to throw on second down. McSorley, he sets up the screen to Jones. And he is going to lose yardage here. 
It's a loss of four. Now third down. I thought that wasn't a bad time to call the screen. I thought late game, down on the scoreboard, had to figure they were expecting a pass downfield. Yeah, so the edge rushers, they're coming. That could have hit big. You're right. Good recognition defensively to snuff that one out. Ready, the ready. Titans on third down. Gator. Just a 20% success Push rate at 2 of 10. Push this is going to be third Watch and 13. Ready, ready. Here's McSorley now, third and long. He's going to go deep for Funchess. And that's caught inside the 30. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up the first and goal. Well, partner, I'm not sure how this drive's going to end, but how about the way they flip field position there? A nice attacking play that picked up a heck of a chunk of yardage. the lead here of course with a touchdown and that's what they're gunning for on first and goal out of the shotgun McSorley looking in zone but it's incomplete line of scrimmage again the four yard line second and goal it'll be McSorley again rolling to his right he'll try and run it and he'll take this forward for two maybe three but we do have a flag down and they're already marching backward on it's on Lyle Collins, free agent signee who was originally thought of as a first-round draft pick. McSorley once more looks to throw. And he can't find a receiver, and he's brought down. Bilal Nichols in there to get him, and that is sack number six now for him on the year. And you hate to say it with a rookie quarterback. He's done some good things, but overall, looked a little bit overwhelmed back there, hasn't he? He certainly has, but in his defense... He hadn't had a lot of time to throw the football. You like the way I said that? In his defense. In his defense. I oh, got yeah. it. You yeah. see what I did there? Yeah. He okay. needs better protection, that's for sure. Go well, they need to reverse the trend. Work. The last two plays have gone backwards. Now it's third and goal. You got to be ready. Grip. Grip. Here's Smith. Right. Call it no gain on the play, so no help there. And now fourth and goal. It's easy work. It's easy work, and it's coming again. I know this is your spot, partner, so forgive me for jumping in, but there's no decision right here. They have to go for it in this situation. They're down on the scoreboard. How many other opportunities are you going to get? Yeah, I'm with you. Fourth quarter, like you said, down on the scoreboard. And remember here, a field goal virtually does them no good. And Captain Zero's kick is right through, and that will cut the lead down to just two. So with that field goal, this one's now back within a field goal. Maybe not the ultimate result they wanted, but gets them that much closer. This game is unfolding like a really good book, isn't it? Because I feel like there's a few more plot twists yet to be revealed before this one is over. This one fielded at the five. Then he'll take this across the 25. Couple Good extra one, yards one, up to the 27-yard line. Out comes the Jacksonville offense as they get set to take over here. I guess the good news as they start this drive is that they, they still do have the lead, Charles. If their defense hadn't been able to hold them to a field goal on the other side, they'd be down. But now it's about preserving that very small lead. It is preserving and maybe stretching it out a little bit. Because if you're a starter on that side of the ball, I certainly hope you didn't loosen up your shoulder pads to start to cut the tape off. Because if you did, you did it way too soon. They've got to go back out there with renewed vigor for lack of a better term, and also a good plan. They need points, and they need them now. Give him nine on the carry that time, and they're set up with a second and one. The last run got nine. That leaves him with second and a yard. Off the play fake, he'll look to throw. Under a heavy rush, and down he goes. Give the sack to Barkevius Mingo, the former number six pick. Well, that play was the very definition of fast, quick, and in a hurry. Suddenly, he was there. In a blink of an eye, that happened fast and a big sack. Got an extra defensive back out there for the Titans now here for third down. Looking to throw. 
It's a short one here, complete to his tight end. The completion there winds up a wash, and it'll bring up fourth down. I hate to surrender the football when you're nursing a slim lead, but they're going to have to punt it away. Trust that defense. It's the right play at this stage of the game as well. You don't need to press it here because you do have that little bit of a cushion and you count on your D to make it stand up. Here's the Titan offense now as they make their way back onto the field. And last time able to get three. It's not what they wanted. They wanted six, but they got at least something. They mustered something out of the drive. They'll take it. Just I, I like the way we, you've described it. Not ideal, but they'll take it. Anything to put some points on the board. But this time on offense, they don't even want to see the field goal kicker trot on the field. <laughs> they want that ball in the end zone. Yeah, they'll be going for six. Turns out to be a great idea to tuck that one. Good for 24 yards. Took just one play to move all the way to the 44 as they try again on first down. McSorley, first and 10. And now he'll tuck it and run. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into get enemy get territory. Get Give him 10 that time, escaping the danger, running with it, and picking up a first down. Back to back good plays have him on the move on first down. They go play action now with McSorley. Oh, no, he lost the football. And the Jags grab it. And they will set up shop at their own 41 yard line. Jaguars come to the line to start their next drive. And they're coming off a three and out, my friend. I think they've got to look at that play sheet and go to a spot that they haven't gone before. Time to shake things up a little bit to try and get this offense moving. Okay, so how do you do that? How do you shake things up? You look at what you've called before and realize it hasn't worked to something else. And maybe you try and find one of those special plays from one of your better players. And maybe try and hit something big and get things going in the excitement area. Oh, the pressure too great, and he goes down once more. Back him up, back him up. Off the edge, the sack by Reggie Ragland. Need something from deep in the bag of tricks here after first and second down went backwards. It's third and very long. He'll look to throw. And that will be incomplete. He's a little trigger happy right there, and it turned into an ill-advised throw into their zone. Well, we know he has confidence. He'll throw it any place, any time, anywhere. That time it fell in. Oh, they come after him, and it's blocked. It's picked up. Remember, the ball is live. And the Titans are in for six. Touchdown. Partners, you well know, every block punt wasn't necessarily a called block. Sometimes the guy just finds his way back there. Doesn't matter. The play happens, and that one turned into six points because they handled it so well after the block. Here's Chandler Catanzaro for the extra point. And the lead is up to five. Able to get the pressure, get a paw on it, knock it down, and then go and grab it and take it into the end zone. What a play. Now Catanzaro after the touchdown to kick it away. This one fielded at the five. Solid return, pretty good field position. They'll start at the 32-yard line. Here comes the Jaguars offense as they get set here. Ready, ready. From the 32 now, here's first and 10. They'll try and start this drive in the air. He's going to hit his man out of the backfield, complete. No gain, and it's second down. Had the completed pass, but for no gain, stopped right at the line, so it's second and ten. Second and ten. And he's going to have the hook up to Gage. And they'll get nine there as that sets him up better for third down. They had the catch on second down, but it didn't help at all, and now they're looking at third down here. Offense. Ready. 
The crowd's not doing that O-line any favors. Home field advantage is really kicking in, making it very difficult for them to hear the snap count. Now back to throw. And the throw there going to be incomplete. That would have been a great catch, but it was real difficult to hold on to it because it was contested all the way. Would have been a great play if he had been able to haul that one in. Here's Matt Hawk now. Remember, though, he did have one blocked earlier. And this is away. It's a high kick, and he got all of it. And not what he was hoping for there is this will hit in the end zone for a touchback. And here comes Tennessee as they get set to take the field. And they got across the 50 last time but fumbled and turned it over, so they'll be looking to have a short-term memory here, Mr. Davis. Not only a short-term memory, but a whole lot better ball security. Because if they take care of the ball, continue to move it, their chances of scoring some points, they've got to feel pretty good about. They thought they had things moving in the right direction last time. Fumbles, they don't just affect you on offense, they affect your overall team because now your defense has to make that stand up. An ideal spot here to get a first down and try to run some more clock, and this is second and less than a yard. Off of play action, it's McSorley. It's caught by Funches. And he's brought down after a very nice gain. A gain there of 21 yards. Back to back good plays have him on the move on first down. Let him know, let him know. They run the counter. Jones credit him with a one-yard gain there to make it second and nine. On second and nine, McSorley, quick hitter here, it's complete. And he's going to have another first down as the tackle's made at the Jaguars' 39. So from the 39 now, they'll come up on a first and 10. Here's McSorley on first and 10. They'll roll him out right. He'll run it. And they'll wind up getting this one all the way down inside the 20. Able to find a lot of empty space there, picking up the first down at a 21-yard gain. All right, partner, I'm a defender, but I've got to express my admiration there. Move it around, making it happen, and instead of worrying about protecting himself, he goes and gets the first down. I've got to give it to him on that one. Normally, you don't want your guy taking shots, your quarterback, but it's winning time here in the fourth quarter. If he needs to make those plays with the legs, go ahead, right? Yeah, no doubt about it. It's, at this stage of the game, all protections, they're off. Gets it to Meredith complete. And they've got it inside the 10 at the 8. A good gain again. That's now 31 yards combined on those last two plays. Fourth quarter, down to the final two minutes, and we've got a one-score game. So the Titans in possession of the football here as we get your reset. They've got it first and goal as they search for what could be a game-sealing touchdown. Stepping up, he's going to keep it, and he'll be brought down right on the edge of the goal line at about the one-yard line. So fresh out of the two-minute warning, and here's another timeout taken with 1.55 remaining. Another yard would probably put this thing in the books. It's second and one. They go option right on second. And he will take this one in for a Titans touchdown. Trace McSorley, touchdown number 15 of the year. And the Titans are able to extend their lead. Well, it'd be real easy to say that they are firmly in control right now, but I'm looking at your face and I'm thinking I've got to be careful with that. Well, it's a two-score game. You're inside of two minutes. I think you can breathe relatively easily now. Yeah, you can, but still, you got to stay vigilant. Can't give up anything cheap and easy. That could put you in some jeopardy. Extra point up and good by Catanzaro, and it gives his guys a 12-point advantage. So that drive in total eight plays, and it ends with a one-yard touchdown run. Now Captain Zero after the touchdown to kick it away. 
This will be fielded at the 8. Then he'll take it past the 25 and up to the 28-yard line. Jaguars come to the line to start their next drive. These guys had to punt their last possession, and that's become too familiar of a refrain. Too many of these drives just wound up going nowhere. But you know how in baseball, when the pitcher gets a base hit and he's on base, they bring his jacket out to him to keep him warm. A lot of times the punter goes to the sideline and puts on sweatpants or a wrap over his left. Nowhere to escape, and he goes down. Now the Jags will use the second of their timeouts as they'll talk it over here before what will be an important third down. They'll drop the throw. Now a desperation throw deep downfield. And that will be incomplete. Well, they weren't scared to let it fly, but it falls to the ground and brings up fourth down. Got to be wary of throwing an interception here because the defense knows they're going to get tested deep. That's why they're going to put a couple of extra guys back there to try and prevent that. Yeah, late in the fourth quarter here, trying to preserve the lead. Back to throw here. Nowhere to escape, and he goes down. William Hayes. And now the football is going to go over, already being placed at the 15-yard line. So with that, we can just about close the book on this one, Charles. Yeah, what's the old expression about slim and none? Well, slim just left town on that <laughs> They're one. down to none? Yes, exactly let's right. Stick the oar. Here we go, let's bring it. Let's go, let's bring it. Let's bring it. Watch twist, watch twist, watch. Hit it. The D can only stop it one more time as they take the knee. The Jaguars now will use the last of their timeouts ready, ready. as they'll talk things eight. over prior to this upcoming ready, second ready, down ready. play. We got four. We got four. Let's go. And they'll indeed take a knee. So time to start going in the Ten other direction as they come up now third and long. Get it. Down to a knee one more time, and that should just about do it. So where'd all that running room that he had in the first half go? Because it looks like it's drying up a little bit here. Someone made some adjustments, it appears, at least on this drive. And the kick is good. So you wonder how this one might be remembered the next time these two teams meet. But until then, this game's over. Well, a little drama there at the end, but really this thing was already decided. The late points get scored, and then it ends on the kickoff. And I'm right there with you, partner. At the end of the game, they knew what they had to do. Just make sure you don't cough up the football at the end. Just take care of it, and victory was theirs, and that's exactly what they did. So for Tennessee, their playoff chances take an uptick as they move to seven and four. And they will hit the road next week to take on the Indianapolis Colts. Meanwhile, for Jacksonville, their woes continue as the record falls now to one and 10. And they'll get a chance to redeem themselves next week at home against Jacksonville. And for Charles Davis and our entire crew here at EA Sports, I'm Brandon Gordon saying so long, everybody.